I really love poppies um, and I find them kind of fun to paint because they've got some flowers have very complex structures that are hard to wrap your head around. Roses are one of those. Um, um, I think of like a like a delphinium or a um, peonies. Oh. Yeah, peonies are oh yeah so hard because of all of the petals and all of the sort of intricacy. So what's nice about um, poppies is that they've got a little bit of they they have big petals and also kind of um, sort of big structures that we can see. So before we go to the black and white version of this, uh, what, what direction is the light coming from in this photo? Can you guys tell? Yes. What direction? Oh yeah, Di Diana, don't say. Come no, on. <laughs> Sandra, you can say if you want to. <laughs> She's waiting. It's coming from uh, the top yep. left. Top left, yes. And we can see that because of these, right? So uh, because of the light, the highlights here, there's probably a little bit of light source bouncing. But notice, this is kind of like that reflected edge that we've talked about with the sphere, where like as something moves away from the dark. But there, you know, there's more than one kind of shadow happening. And if you look at the and that's because of the way the petals kind of pop out. So if you look at the black and white, you can see it really clearly. Look at that. So you can see that the area closest to the light on the petals, right, on each petal here um, is light. And what's happening here and down here? Somebody else answered that question. What's happening? What's happening down here? The petal is translucent, so the light's going through it. Right. And then what's happening here? When it go goes from uh, light to shade, it, yeah. it is actually not a soft a very soft edge. No, it's a really strong edge, yeah. right? It's a pretty strong yeah. edge. It's there's a change in direction, right? This part yeah. of the petal is turning down away from the sun. Mm -hmm. So even though this whole petal is in the light, this part is sticking out and hitting the light directly. There's a shift in direction, which means there's a shift in plane, right? There's a plane shift that's happening here. It's actually very beautiful. It is really beautiful, isn't yeah. it? I really love it. Um, yeah, I mean, I paint poppies all the time. I find them extremely. And then, of course, it's the same thing, although this poppy, so you'll notice this area here, the light area, tends to be a little bit darker than the light area over here, because even though there is also a shift in plane and there's a change in direction, um, there's also, uh, uh, it's more shaded by the rest of the poppy. There, it's also true that this petal is really shaded very dramatically by this one here, right? So there's a couple of things that are really pushing, but really what that is, is a plane change that we're trying to capture. And as things go towards the center of any flower, they become darker. You can really see that here. Right, things become really dark in here. I'm looking at the top here. Here's the break here. Here's the break here. So, as we start the sketch, I'm still going to have you do that. I still want you to measure, I want you to get used to the idea of measuring. So I'm going to give you a big kind of circle. I'm not going anywhere. Steve. Right, to measure, to start with. If I draw something down here, and then I find the halfway point. 
it was funny yesterday I was doing a face lesson how to draw a face and I thought that I would show the students and here's the halfway point or so uh, you can see that the halfway point is kind of right underneath where that um, this petal shape is this kind of center area the pollen part um, you can see that the three quarter point is kind of down all very close to where this plane shift happens from dark to light on the petal. Uh, and up here, this kind of almost nearly boundaries the whole inner section. So I think this will help us find certain things. And then, of course, I'm going to go this way, right? We're going to go straight across at the halfway point. And it's pretty much the same height. Let's check that in a couple of different ways here. here. Yeah, looks like the height and the width are about the same. So when I start my sketch, I'm gonna start. I have, I'm working with an eight by 10 today, by the way, but you can do whatever you want. Yeah, I, I can start this. Why is that so? There we go. Right, I've got this. And then I'm going to find my halfway point. Nope. Anyway, last night when I was doing faces, I um, I made so many mistakes, right, in the process of doing the face. And I fixed them so quickly that I was like, I'm going to keep a little tally up here. And I had this little tally sheet of all the mistakes I made and fixed in the process of doing a face, it was like 75, <laughs> 75 yeah. least, that I kept count. There was a point where I lost count and I was, you know, to make the point that. I'm gonna try to finish my citrus flower. Yes, I have finished my penguin. Oh, penguin. they're so cute. Yours are much cuter than mine. Mine, mine got. You gave up. I don't know. I'm gonna to return to it eventually, but I'll, I'm taking a break. I wonder if my. Um, anyway, I know things look kind of fuzzy on the screen today, so I'll make this really prominent and I'll take a picture of it. Here is my halfway. Here is my quarter. Here is my three quarters. And then, of course, my halfway is going to be exactly at the halfway point. I'm going to make it the same width as my height. Let's see if I got that right. Yep, width and height are the same. So let me take a picture of this. Oops, yep. Bring this down so I can get a picture of it. There we go. So go ahead and send it to me when you're at this process, at this stage of the game. I just want to make sure your measurements are right before we go on. I'm going to try, you know what? I'm going to try leaving. I wonder what is going on here. I'm going to try leaving and I'm going to try leaving and coming back. So you guys here, I'll send this picture across. Oh boy, Emma, that came along nice. Beautiful. Here. I'm sending this so you can see it. And I'm going to try leaving the meeting and coming back in. Almost no bad.
That's a little bit better. Really weird. Let's see. Let's see. Yeah, Annika looks good. You can go ahead and draw the circle now. I want you to kind of pay attention to the bends and the shape of this circle because you can, right? So instead of just drawing a basic circle, Kind of pay attention to the shape of this circle. No petals yet. Believe me, we'll want to use negative space for those. This kind of extends out a little bit. Yeah, really, the poppy is kind of one of the easier things to paint. Go ahead, everybody. So feel free to send your stuff in. I'll make liberal use of our WhatsApp thread so everybody can see. <clears throat> Oops, sorry, buddy. Get this out of the way. Oh, yeah. Oh, my little spray kitty is out. I'll be right back. I'm going to give her some food. A crowd comes on weekends. I know her means. Yeah. Yeah. The crow only comes on weekends. What? The crow only comes on weekends. I don't know. No, he's normally here every day, but it's been really cold. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, looks good, Rashmi. Looks good, Anik. All right. So of course I mixed up. He'll he'll probably show up later. It's freezing right oh. now. I know it's cold where you guys are too. It's, yeah, it's even cold in LA. Right? It's cold in LA. That says something. The cold snap is hitting us. Uh, oh, yes, humans are such disasters sometimes, aren't we? Causing all kinds of problems all the time. Yes. <laughs> yes. Pretty much blame can be blamed for most of For most of it. <laughs> We're kind of idiots for like having, you know, supposed brains that continue to develop and evolve. <laughs> Um, all right, so you know you've got this guy here. Make sure you put this in the right place. Look, it's kind of close. Look at, pay attention to it. Use this to kind of help you place this correctly. Um, I can see that like up here, this kind of, if I lined it up, it comes up above. Use, I want you to get used to the idea of using your visual senses. You're gonna have, you're kind of retraining your visual senses and it takes a while. And as I look at this, I'm like, oh, that doesn't look right. Might not be. Um, and then here, I'll draw in the major in orange so we can really see them. Petals. But the petal might actually be here, be here. Okay. 
I like to kind of get those shapes in and then this shape here before I start getting in the inner shapes. So I'm gonna place this using my grid, using my little gritty, my little set of envelopes. They help with everything. They're not just about the mail anymore. <laughs> Your envelope will solve virtually every issue you have if you use them faithfully. And that's really the thinking that we need. Let's see. If I wanted to, I could really see that like this petal here kind of starts about at about a quarter point here. Right? So there's like this guy happening. There's two things happening. Well, let's get the second petal in and then we'll get the darks and lights. So this kind of comes straight up and over like that. Oh, hey, hey, hey. Come on, somebody's coming to say hello. <laughs> Sam. <laughs> totally. Oh, Hermes, did you hang me up? Come on, don't do that. Uh, sorry about that. <laughs> cats must be cats cats must be cat cats must do what cats gonna do here i'm i am once again uh i'm gonna take a picture and i'm once again gonna go pop go off and come back and see if i can get a better um reception that i'm getting i'm actually gonna log off the whole thing so i'll have you guys Ugh, near you Here we are. Come on. The orange ones are really what you're going to want to be working with first. Let me, I'm going to log off again. Come on, dude. Let's see if we can get better. Hi, buddy. You want to come up and say hi? Come up and say hi to everybody. I said, I do. I do. I do, mommy. Come here. I can see you. I know. I, uh, uh, I had to take the notepad off and turn it back on. It'll be. Uh, uh, I was hoping to see the cat. Oh, he'll come. He'll come. Okay. I'll get him over. I'll let you know. <laughs> I'll, I'll spotlight him. <laughs> you only care about the animals. You never mind the painting. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Here, I'll come. Oh, he's looking at himself at the mirror right now. You know that's you. Do you? Hi, buddy. Oh. He wants to go out and be with the other kitty. Probably uh, Tara. Uh, this is very dangerous, by the way. Yep. Probably T. Probably Tara. Yes. No, it's not very dangerous. I don't know because also, I don't know how Hermes is vaccinated, but my arm vaccinated against feline leukemia, and a cat that roams outside will likely have it. Yeah, he has his vaccinations, all his vaccinations. But, okay. um, I'm kind of debating whether I want to, um, I'm kind of debating whether I want to um, uh, try and trap this cat eventually and at least get her spayed. Yes. Right? Yes. Um, so I'm trying to sort of build up enough trust that she's around where I can, until I can get her into a cage and zip her off to an organization that will do that. My mother used to do that. She used to um, get them spayed and then invite them in for the winter. And then they never moved out. Right. By the time <laughs> right. They kind of stay. That's what I sort of figure. So I'm like, hmm. Um, I just wanted to, sh let's see if you can see Hermes. I go here. So I by the time she died, we had six cats to distribute. Ah. All right, we're going to try this again. Hopefully this will be better. And in the meantime, to entertain you all, I'm going to switch my camera over to the rear camera. So you can see, you can it's like a cat oh, wow. cam. You nice. can watch him wandering around being 
Caddy. Here, I'll spotlight him. <laughs> it's beautiful. <laughs> it's hilarious. Here, I'll do this for a second while I while I log us on. <laughs> a lot of cat butt there. You get cat butt. A lot of cat butt. <laughs> I'd love to see the reaction to somebody who watched this video. <laughs> Um, I was looking recently, actually, interestingly enough, the videos that get watched by far the most are the um, abstract art videos. We don't get very many people coming to the classes, only like three, a handful, but we everybody. Okay, let's see. Let's try this again. I have never tried that class. Um, it's pretty great. My friend Carista teaches it and she is, she's excellent. All right, let's see if we have a better. No more cat entertainment. Here, hold on. I'm going to remove the spotlight. Hi, sweetheart. Oh, this is Mr. Sweetface. Oh, oh, chebu. All right, let's get back to it. Oh, yeah, it looks better. I'm glad I did that. Okay. Uh, Leah, I've just joined on, so hi. Hi, how you doing, sweetie? We're going slow. I'm good, but I lost my glasses. Oh, oh no. That might be a problem for painting. Oh, give this a bit of a bit No, it's not very bad. Okay, so we've got, oh wait, let me, let me bring that down a little bit. All right, so let me catch up with all of you. <gasps> What's happening? Robert wants to come on top of my painting. Of course he does. Because he's being a, because cats. Can you guys, it's a little hard to see here, but this is like basically the inner flower, the outer petal starts here. And then, of course, you've got this happening. You've got this happening up here. It's happening. And then, and then you can sketch in your darker areas in that outer petal. Right here we go. The outer petals, I should say. That's that's this one. Yeah, I don't know where the toes are today. All right. And then I feel like I want to get these lines out. Make sure before you do get rid of your little crossbar grid here. By the way, the ultimate goal is not that you have this. Oh yeah, and then we can do our inside lines. Sorry, I forgot to do this. The inside shapes of the upper petals. By the way, the, the idea is not ultimately that you do this on your papers, on your on your drawings, but that you understand that you need to do it. So once you get to a point where it becomes kind of automatic that you measure, you don't have to actually put the lines down. But for me, it's the best way to highlight where the problems are. And, so, and for you too, it's the best way to highlight the problems that you're having while you're still learning, while your drawing is getting stronger. Right. Ultimately, I just want you to be thinking like this and be able to kind of eyeball that and see that. But in the beginning, it's a little harder to see it. Oh, oh, yeah. and there's these kind of little light areas. And um, I'm going to put in these guys too. They're cute. I love these pods. Oh, look, I immediately made it like way too big. Not that it's really problematic, but for the process of practice. There we go, up above the halfway point. Uh -huh. 
And there's a kind of second one in the back, fuzzier, smaller. On this side, there's one more. Have you guys also heard this compositional rule that it's helpful to have things in odd numbers? Yeah. And not even numbers. So, no, that there, have, huh? Mm -hmm. No, I haven't heard. Can you tell All us? All right. So, um, yes. So, in general, when you're kind of trying to, you know, put things into a composition, um, even like numbers, tools. yeah, even numbers are really considered. Um, kind of two uh, are considered compositionally not as interesting as like odd numbers. So you'll see I have three three of these pods and one flower, right? But two flowers, sometimes you can get away with two flowers, but two flowers, four flowers, four pods, those kind of things feel a little bit more stilted. So, um, so you should so have odd three numbers. guys. Yeah, yeah, right. Uh, except for things, of course, that you need to have, like... Um... No, not two penguins or two eyes. Mm -hmm. There we go. And Sandra, look who I have on the top of my head here. Here, now I'll switch him around. Switch it around so you can see. He's, like, climbing all over everything. Oh, oh. <laughs> Yeah, the spotlight. Here he is. He's like, Hello. I'm so. He said, I'm so bored. I'm so bored. I know he really is fantastic, isn't he? Yeah. Like I'm crazy. I'm twitching my tail. I'm going to do things. All right. Let's take a look at your sketches. I'll remove this. Yeah, so if you've got like ducks on a pond or flowers in a field. No, I have or... two penguins. That's okay. We're going to live with it. I okay. mean, what are you going to do? But like just in general, think about the idea that like we generally avoid uh, for composition's sake. Okay. This is like father and son, I think. That's also why when you paint with a lot of highlights and stuff, you're going to uh -huh. try to have the same color in three places so it right. doesn't the eye doesn't go to one place oh thank you it's useful uh Ani, that looks pretty good um i i uh, i want you uh, actually i'm going to fix this too while i'm at it look um rashmi look at this shape you can correct it as you're putting in your inner lines. But look at this shape. It doesn't come up like a little catcher's mitt, right? It kind of comes out a little bit more. I mean, there's a little tiny guy here, but um, um, yeah. This actually, interestingly, comes out a little bit wider. This comes in. I'll send a picture of this across. You guys can see it. <clears throat> oh, Diana, that's coming along nicely. Are you done? No. Yeah, maybe a little bit more definition in the center where the yeah. petals yeah. are. Other than that's that, exactly, it looks pretty, that's exactly where I'm going now. That's pretty good. But otherwise, it looks it's more done than not done. I would yeah. Say. Yeah. Buddy. Yeah, you know what I mean. It's yeah. like it's closer. It's super close. It's really beautiful. It is. Let's see. Can you imagine Diana's garden right now? It must be smelling so nice. Yeah, and it's so nice because it's I can see a, it's fruiting oh, it's and flowering at the same time. Oh, oh, gorgeous. So like this. Uh, 
I'm gonna have to do this for right now. I I just sent a picture to show how it's fruity. Oh, 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 oh my god. <laughs> wow. What wow. Is what trees, Miss Diana? Lemon. That's the lemon tree. Mm. Oh, yeah. so beautiful lemons. Aren't they gorgeous? I want some. I know. <laughs> she's, got a, she's got a lot. <laughs> oh. She's got a lot of lemons. I have Big expensive. And, and it's yeah, really not I mean, as beautiful can, as this. You mm. can see how, how much fruit it is. That's just like the tip of one branch. And I bet you the animals don't steal those, do they? No, they don't. They don't. Mm. Lemons you get to keep. <laughs> mm. specific... else, you have to fight with the squirrel, squirrels and the birds. Yeah. I, I have specific attachment to lemon and the smell of the lemon flowers because um, Ooh. My grand, my grandpa used to keep a, a lemon little tree in a flower pot. I mean, kind of huge flower pot. And it's all the hubbub about this tiny lemon tree. Imagine end of communism in Poland, lemons, yeah? yeah. <laughs> so so in, in winter you would bring it in? Yeah, totally, to the, to the house. And it was exactly more or less this time of the year when it was blossoming with two or three flowers, oh. precious ones. And I was a little kid, very often laying on the floor and just smelling those flowers. Oh, it's so, so nice. And you, did, you, did you get many lemons out of it? Few, sometimes a few. Too. Right? They were not really, they were not really, you know, juicy or anything, but you know, that was my grandpa's ambition <laughs> to grow <Right>. a lemon. <laughs> Because they were the, the citrus uh, citrus fruits were so scarce <laughs> during his whole life, so honestly, it's a hu huge endeavor. And uh, till now, the lemon flowers, uh, the, the perfume and any any scent of the lemon flowers is my favorite one. Yeah, I do you know what it, it smells. Smell like it smells so good in the garden right now. It's oh, I can't even imagine. I'm so jealous, Diana. <laughs> Um, by the way, I have made a point to kind of reach out to Olga and say just that I love her and that we're thinking about her. Um, and she really liked that. So if anybody here wanted to just send her a WhatsApp message, she's, I think those will make her feel good right now. I mean, as good as you can. You know, she's super worried and we are too. Yeah, yeah. because her brother is, is a fighter. I know. Yeah. And even, and her father is a journalist, you know, which is... Yeah, you know, I know. And um, the city yeah. is getting filled anyway, so... Yeah. So, if we send her a note, just telling her you're thinking about her, I think it seems to help her feel better, a little better. Yeah. I know she knows it. Okay, honey, you're gonna go in. Give me just a second. I'm gonna take the troublemaker in. Come on, my lovey. Come on, lovey. Okay. When you're ready, go ahead and send over your, yes, let's see. Beauty. Rashmi, this petal, uh, let me see. 
Eh. Something looks a little bit flat here. Like, let's see. So this inner petal here comes to the halfway point, a little bit past the halfway point here, right? Uh, yours is kind of squished in like this. Hmm. It's yours is like right here. See that? Yours is kind outer, of up. The outer orange line? This line, so this orange line is the definite, is between this petal and this petal, the inner petals mm -hmm. and the outer. You have yours. This line is between the dark and the light of this mm -hmm. inner petal. So you're, this one is not coming out far enough. We need to erase, just erase everything here and bring this, this inner set out farther so that it looks more wide than it does sort of tall. Okay. Mm -hmm. See, yours looks like this. I'm gonna do it with blue so you can see where the problem is. Yours is like this. You have your inner petal here. Your inner petal needs to be here. Not here. It's an important shape, this shape. I mean, sure, you can kind of get away with it. Right, with a flower, but it's not a good practice because you're going to have trouble later if you can't kind of track shapes. So I'm trying to really push it, this shape idea. There we go. see everybody else's shapes too. Also, I kind of ran out of cadmium red light. <laughs> so it'll be interesting to see how we do this painting. But I've got other things, but. I'll see everybody else's uh, drawing and then um, we'll get into painting. You guys are getting faster. Normally it takes us an hour to do the drawing. But I think you're almost all the way through in like 15 minutes. Thank 
Here, by the way, if you want to see it in color before I put up this print out, which is back there. Leah, uh, we sent it. Okay. Did you say, oh God, you resent it? <laughs> no. Okay. Oh, better. Much better. Yep. Yep. I'm just checking a couple of your measurements, Gosh, just to make sure. Yep. Everything looks good. Okay. Anybody else? Everybody else ready? Uh, Berlin, what you got going there? Annika, let me see your drawing. I sent it. Oh, you did? I can send it now because it's, it's I've changed it. Okay, I'll, I'll send it now. over. I'm losing my mind. I don't see it. Oh, okay. Well, maybe yeah. I sparked it. Uh, I'll do it. Okay. I didn't see it. I might. I might. I don't know if I did one flower too blue. I'm gonna send this one. Okay, send it over. I'm gonna take a photo. Probably it's perfect, but it was really. I want to distinguish the two flowers so they're not. Yeah, yeah. Pushing one back and the other one forward yeah. with a little bit of blue that makes total sense. But maybe it's too blue. But I don't know. It probably is, but who cares? <laughs> Uh, Annika, that looks good. Yep, looks good. All right, you guys, I think we're ready. Look at these pretty layers. It really makes you appreciate the kind of how a flower unfurls, right? This kind of beauty to the... Um... Oh, you mean the one in the back? Yeah. Well, you know what I'm gonna say. I'm going to say the only Wait. problem is purple or, or or mix or actually try something different. Um, try uh, try a little bit of a burnt sienna wash over the blue. Let's see if that interacts and pushes it back a little bit. OK, the problem is the blue is really bright. Yeah, so it's pushing forward. So you need yeah. to mute it with some orange. Yeah. So you might try a glaze on top of orange just to see what happens. If it's still too bright, then you mix a little bit of blue with orange and, and that's yeah. what you lay in there. I'll, um, yeah, it's a competing I, thing. Do you guys see what's happening there? And this uh, is actually a really good lesson. Um, I see. Uh, yeah, and and you know it's good for everybody else because you explain it, right? So if you look at this, if you look at this on, you can't really see it on the screen here, but if you look at this painting, you will see what Diana's trying to do is push back this flower, right? right. Make it look, and so she made this blue while keeping this kind of pink and orange. But the problem is her blue is very bright. Yeah. So the blue is actually competing with, it's not going back, right? It's not pushing back, it's popping forward because the blue is so bright. So she's going to mute that blue with a little bit of the complement and in a couple of different ways. And that should, so that's why this is doesn't look quite done. Yeah. Because these two things are both pushing to go forward and they really shouldn't be. Really no. only one thing should be coming forward and the other is going back to show depth. Yeah. Um, all right. Everybody ready? Shall we try this? Shall we start going to mixing? 
Um, we're going to do an underpainting, and I am really in the mood for something bright. So I'm going to say, let's do a lime. I'm going to try a lime green. You, of course, can do any underpainting color that you want. The only color I would advise against you painting this in the base is um, pink because uh, because it's too much like the top color and it won't give you enough vibrancy. So you could do this as like burnt sienna. You could do this as a green. I am gonna put a lot of yellow in my green. This is cadmium yellow. You can do whatever you want for your underpainting. I'm not even gonna put any red in my green on this layer. I'm just gonna make it as bright as possible. Hold on, I'm gonna be right back. This is viridian green and yellow, but I don't really care what you use. Um, you know, you can make your background, you can make it purple, you can make it blue. But I'm in the need for this beautiful bright yellow green this morning. So that's what I want to use on the base. So as usual, I'm going to start with a pretty big brush. Here's my big brush, it's almost an inch across. And I'm gonna go darker. I'm gonna go to the darker areas first. So that's like here, here. Notice I'm kind of going around the little stamen thing here. Yeah. That's darker. That's it. And then I'm going to add a bit of yellow, a lot more yellow to get my lighter yellows. Now that's what I'm talking about. You'll notice on the base painting, we will often only do kind of two values when it comes to um you know kind of light and dark when it comes to using acrylic or oil paint and that's because we can totally lay light colors on top so the darker really the better but it's still good to kind of show transitions and even if you want to kind of blend a little bit here on the edge you can totally do that more yellow. There we go. Already, even though it's messy, it looks okay. And then I'm kind of gonna lay this green in here, here, and then I'm gonna go darker for the background, darker green. I know this is also green, but we'll probably end up glazing this red. We can pop back this. I know I'm also going super quick. I'm using a lot of paint, less water, more paint. I just want to get a little bit of paint everywhere so that my next layers is very cheery. Okay. I'm going to take a picture of this so you can see it. 
I, but you know, you could do a burn, you could do anything. You could do purple, you could do blue. You could do yellow. Really, the only thing you, sh you probably don't want to do is uh, pink or red. Oops. Oh. Oops, dripped a little bit of lead on this. Watch out. And then I'm waiting for this to dry as well. So the less water, probably the quicker it's going to dry. Let's see. Oh yeah, much better. So then Diana, I would put a little bit of bright whitey yellow on the front one. Okay to continue, particularly where it um, intersects with the blue in the background. Just a little tip, like kind of like a highlight, like right. Um, okay. The kind of right here. Yeah. So that it really pushes forward and maybe in a couple of places. All right. Where, where it kind of intersects. It's fine here, right? Where the background is dark. Yeah. But where it runs into these blues, we really want this to push forward. It's beautiful. Huh, it's just wonderful. Painting the garden. Painting the garden and working the edges. That's all we're really doing. Yeah. Just working the edges. Okay. I'll try that. You know, 80% of the work of the painting goes in working where one edge meets another, where red meets, where, you know, the flower meets the background, where one, the light meets the dark where yep. the one petal meets the other, like 80% of this is where it happens in the, um, around the edges only. We don't really paint so much where there aren't edges. Um, it's the magic trick in which you can make this painting look beautiful and impressionist. Oops.
Nice, Ani. Ani decided to go with red in the background. Totally valid. Works. All right. Let's see a couple of other paintings. I'd love to see what you guys are doing. Here, I'm going to get another sheet. Is this a warm or a cool flower, you guys think? What is this warm or cool red? Warm, I guess. The warm side, right? But, but it's, it's almost got, like neutral. It's kind of a mix. I think a lot of these flowers, yeah, yeah, it's a little, it's not really neutral. It's warmish with a little bit of cool in it, is how I would. I guess the mid cooler. Yeah, I mean, definitely the lighter areas are warmer, right? And these are cooler that will, we will cool those down like any shadow. Yeah, it looks like a cat. That's exactly what I was thinking, uh, Anika. I was thinking my painting looks like a cabbage right now and I love cabbages. I think they're <laughs> like one of the prettiest things to paint. I should probably have you guys paint one because they're they're really a lot of fun. Definitely. Yeah, they're fun. Um, so I noticed that I was out of cat, like a kind of classic warm red, which is cadmium red light. I have something called cadmium red, deep, so I'm going to have to kind of build within that. We're definitely going to, uh, I'm going to recommend putting a couple of reds out because we might actually use them both. Mixer. Where are you with a mixer? I just had you a second ago. So this is something called cadmium red deep. It's a little bit cooler than the other cabs. But let's see how it compares to like quinacridone. I'm also gonna put, I'm gonna put a little bit of burnt sienna as well, just in case I need it. And uh, let's look at that compared to the, wait, maybe that's quinacridone. My cat red. Oh yes, that's quinacridone. Here's my cat red deep. So that's the really cool one. Um, so you'll notice cat red deep. So this is quinacridone. This is a cool red. Cat red deep is slightly warmer. Oh, I have just a teeny little bit left. So I'm gonna see if I can get it out. Right, throw away this. A little bit of cad red. If you do not have like a classic kid red, you can, you know, kind of create one with um or with with yellow. Cadmium yellow. I'm just out of everything. Wait a minute. Oh yeah, here you are. No, wait. I'm gonna add a little olive are and crimson in there too. I'm just adding all my reds. Why not? I had a cat. Oh, there it is. On the ground. There. I'm going to get a little bit of cad yellow. And then, of course, we're going to need some green. So we've got a little bit of green there, too. Um, I'm going to also suggest we have a little bit of blue. I'll put ultramarine blue next to my burnt sienna for dark. Let's see if I can get some. This is ultramarine. Okay. So let's see. We're as usual going to start with that shadow color. Oh, that looks great, Rashmi. Good. Good job.
So these areas here, which are darker, I'm gonna take, I'm gonna try some cad red, deep, just a little touch of green. Remember, if we take little tiny touches of green, oh yeah, that's beautiful. It makes this kind of rich purple shadow color, kind of deep rich. Ah, oh, there we go. I should take a fair amount of green. It's a beautiful, and if I wanted to kind of warm it up, if I and I can add, I'm adding a little bit of Quinn Red to it. Yep. Just to kind of deepen the red. It's easy when you're mixing for red, for a shadow color of red to get too much green in it and then it looks muddy. So your challenge um, is to, you know, uh, bring in the green in pieces so that you can really, here we go, there's a good color. There's a good uh, color of it. And then once again, can I dry it? Uh, not really dry. We'll see what happens when I go on with the kind of wet. Right now. Get wet. I mean, it does, I don't really care because, oh, yeah, that's a beautiful color. Right. I'm just going to do the outer edge right now, this outer petal, because what I want to do before this paint is dry is I want to um, mix a kind of lighter color that I can blend into the darker color. So this color is red, got a little bit of cad red here, a touch of yellow and more cad red deep here, right? So this color and a little bit of my cooler red too. Oh yeah, that's kind of nice. So I can blend this color into my dark. So I can have a blended edge. And I want both sides to be wet for that. I may have to go over this again because my underpainting is not quite dry, but it doesn't hurt. See that, so I'm kind of blending in the edge and you really want, I need to get lighter here, I can. There's a little bit of yellow. I'm lightening with yellow, not with white, but with yellow. This brush is actually big enough that it's knocking against my stand here. So you see how I'm kind of, I'm just brushing in over the edge so that the edge is not so strong. There's still a dark to light transition, but the edge is not so strong. That's why I'm not doing more than one petal at a time. Or uh, I am doing more than one petal, but I'm doing kind of the outside layer. I'll do the inside layer next. See how I'm blending, pushing in. Okay, I'm gonna actually have to turn this upside down so I can reach it. There we go. I would rather brush down than up. Easier to control. Brush. I'm going back in with a little bit of dark just to make sure I kind of maintain my dark areas and I'm blending that up. I still want it to be blended. I don't want it to be so strong. I kind of wish I had more cadmium red, but this is working okay. Go ahead and try it. Try it with just the outside area. Keep 
think this is an idea that you're really pushing your brush skills because we don't have so much to paint. So, right, we've only got this one thing we're focusing on. So use this as a, a moment to kind of really practice the brush skills. I think I'm going to abandon you guys. No. Why? I have so much to do today. I got it. What are you working on? Well, I'm working on updating a lot of stuff, posting a couple of scholarships. And, right. Yeah. Just and, all the little things that take a million. Yeah, that has really been put on the back burner with the awards. Yeah. And now we have the next award going. So <laughs> he's here a masochist. <laughs> yeah, I am. I am. <laughs> All right, Diana. Well, Godspeed, get lots of work done. I sent you the updated and I'm, I also added a layer to the penguin. So I'm going to work on that next. Oh, right. Yes, I'm going sure back to the penguin. Yeah, it's. I have to make it work somehow, but so I, it looks great. This looks beautiful, Diana. Absolutely beautiful. I think you're done. I feel the 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 top flower coming forward. It's gorgeous. Thank you. You're done. Check it off the list. Okay. I sent you where I'm at the, with the penguin that I'm gonna work on next. Okay. Oh yes, I can see better. This is better. This is a good uh, thing to start on. Yeah. Whoa, it's a winter guy. Okay. Okay, Hi. Diana. Have a good day. Have a good day. Yes. Hopefully, I see you tomorrow morning. Yes, please. We do. Hey, Doa. Hey, Doa. Hey, Doa. I'd like to see somebody's flowers before I get go any further. I will get in there, but let me see what you've got first. What you got? I'm gonna try blending a little bit more. Now I'm trying to kind of soften this blend. There we go, better. You know, the blending is this kind of this constant back and forth. They're always adjusting it. You'll see that like your dark light underpainting kind of supports it, but you're still kind of constantly having to return to it. Now, if you want, when you get to the highlights, you can use white. I have a feeling it's gonna be kind of flat. So I'll probably, well, maybe we'll use white and yellow kind of up here. I'd like to see at least one more. Let's see. Uh, so take your time, don't rush. Let's see. Honey. Oh yeah, beautiful, Anik. Just a blend, I like your variation. Um, yeah, we'll just keep working on this blend, right? And you're pushing yours a little bit more than I am mine, but I think that totally works. That looks beautiful. Thank you. 
I think I will run over a few more layers because uh, yeah, 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 to just to get the popping right out. And then, yeah. of course, we've got this dark area. So there's a couple of things happening in the next layer. Number one, we have this like kind of super dark. So I'm starting with kind of a red dark layer here. Going around the pollen up here. There, it's kind of skin. You can see it's kind of uh, thinner around the edge. And then we're going to go back in. And I'm going to mix a little bit of burnt sienna with blue, ultramarine blue, to go to get these dark dots that are here. They're kind of all, so can you see that? We start with red and green. And then, and we're gonna add these little zitsies, <laughs> little zitsies, thingies last. But we're starting by getting the kind of base layers in. That dark, this is, so this is a combination of burnt sienna and blue and underneath it is red and green now i could go back in with my kind of top layer here now the edge is a little bit harder here so you can get away with a slightly less more less blending and more More of a strong, I'm going to get in with a little bit of dark thing in here. Ugh. But you do want there to be a pretty strong distinction between your light and your dark side. Up here it's a little thinner, a little darker. And here. You see how I'm kind of reshaping with a little bit of darker red? I'm still emphasizing that. Shape. Here. It gets kind of thinner up here. less distinct up here so i'm going over with darker red you can make it a little bit lighter up here kind of getting darker as it goes down into the center here yeah And let me know if you need me to remind you of any color mixes or ways to do things. You know.
look at how much this painting pops out just by adding these three elements. <clears throat> is this helpful, you guys, to do this single flower? Yes, it is. It's kind of also a torture, but it is helpful. A little torture. <laughs> well, a little bit of torture, a little bit of helpful. Leah? Hello? Are you still there, Leah? Can you hear me? Oh, no, she's gone.
I'd love to see somebody's work. If you guys have got, if anybody's at a point to show me. Can I show you like this here? Uh, yeah, hold on a second. Let's get you up there. Hold it up. Aww. <laughs> <laughs> They're wonderful. <laughs> I'm still not. I'm working this guy now. Yeah, mm. I can see it. Wonderful work. God, they're so fucking cute. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they just make me giggle. Thank you. God, we need that right now. That way. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, beautiful brushwork, Rashmi. Wonderful. Can you feel this flower starting to like pop forward? Yeah, much better than last yes. week. Yes. So just like, remember, you can paint these things. We just got to take it like one bit at a time. Oh, the brushwork is just gorgeous. Yeah, oh, yum, yum, yum. I love what you've got kind of going on down here with these kind of lighter and darker streaks going into the dark shadows. Oh, so beautiful. All right. So um, let's see. What do we want to do next? I'm going to look at this. So this is kind of this funny pink and green color kind of almost a purpley color i'm going to try mixing a little quinacridone with a teeny bit of green and a little bit of yellow to create a kind of muddy mauve yeah it seems to actually be kind of working So I'm going to try and let as much of my kind of bright green come through as I can. And I'm not going to try and draw every one of these little lines here. In fact, I'm going to go back in and add some bright green. <laughs> because I, I feel it there. I'm not going to draw every one of these little lines. I'm just going to draw enough enough of them to kind of show the direction that this little sort of center bit is coming. And the main thing is to kind of show the gathering point at the top here, not in the center, right? Because we're looking at it from the side. So we see this like little bit, this little center you notice I mixed actually, I actually did mix some yellow and green to get it in here in between. And then it's the best way to handle. All right. I'm going to do this. You'll actually observe that where we can see the little pollens here in the dark areas, they're lighter. I think I need white. I may need to go to white. Yeah, let's see. I'm going to add just a touch of white and let's do a little bit of mixing. It's kind of like a pinky. Not too dramatic. I feel like the, the little pollinator stamens are kind of like this pinky green greeny white so i'm kind of mixing i'm mixing green pink and a little bit of white looks like a little blue got in there because i was being sloppy and then if you remember correctly oh you know what this is even better okay hold on oh, i know what i'm gonna do there's my color brushes there up down here so one of the things that makes me crazy is the fan brush drives me nuts However, I think it's a dumb brush and it does dumb things. I'm going to fix it <laughs> in the following way. Hang on. You're going to take scissors to it? I do like the idea that it has um, some of these spread out brushes. So I'm just going to cut it. <laughs> Can we see you do it, please? Yeah, I'm doing it. But we can't see. Oh, you can't? Oh, yes, yes, I see, I see. I beg your pardon. I'm looking around the place. Huh. I'm going to 
cut it so it's narrower. There we go. <laughs> so now I have this narrow kind of choppy little set of uh, brushes that kind of are I'm missing a little bit of green that are kind of spread out. So you can see I've got like I've kind of loaded up the brush with paint. And I'm going to try like a couple of brush marks here where I'm not still too bright. I don't think I want so much white. I don't think you really want so much white. It's going to be my suggestion. So you see, I'm kind of like laying them out. Oh, yeah, this is the way to make a fan brush. Excellent. I can already tell I'm going to need to get darker. Probably going to have to glaze everything. I'm going over with yellow. And maybe even a touch of red on top. So I'm going over. But you can see the key is that my brushes, my, my, um, my bristles are kind of standing apart. So I can make little marks. that look kind of random. Uh, there's like one or two up here, a few down here, and then they get dark. So I'm going to go back to my green red mix. Up here. So when they get, I can see I need to go even darker. I'm going to take some of my red blue mix here and where they intersect with the red they get dark got one or two kind of popping up here so the question will be not to make little soldiers right that's why i'm using this fan brush i'm gonna get the right off of it because it's gonna it's gonna give me Light, light layers. So I have this feeling of all these little marks. So if you have a fan brush, you want to be, and you're feeling destructive, <laughs> like I am this morning. Seek revenge on something. Right, something harmless. Well, ben it's just. I wouldn't use it. It would just sit, they would just sit there laying in my drawer. Right. So now you know, I've now I've added these little streaks. It's a little bit like when I had you take, you know, one of these brushes and pull out a few like this and dip it in. You could totally do that too. You could absolutely do that. But the fan, if you cut it up a little bit, will kind of spread out naturally for you. Oh, very nice. Is that Oscars or is that Emma's? Which one is that? Who's got the paint on? That's my mom. Oscar. It's mine. Oh, Emma. No, it's mine. I'll send you Oscars. All right. I'll send Emma. you Oscars. Oscars is better than mine. <laughs> I don't know. I just think it's, I love your brushwork, Emma. Uh, everybody's getting really good brushwork today. So lovely. Um, then I'm going to come back in with my, you know, little flat where I have a little bit more control. And I'm going to go in and add like, and I'll take a look in a second, right? It's I'm going to come in. how it jumps out with the green background. Yeah. Sort it. Sort it. Hold on. I'm going to come back it's in. It still like spans off the page. Just one second, and I'm, I'm going to take a look in just a second. I'm, I'm just showing the next step. So I'm going to come back in and and lighten, right, a little bit around these. So if I get too thick, I want to lighten around the dark areas so that you can really see them. Here, there's a kind of a 
you can't see the dark areas so much. You see how I'm coming in and kind of cleaning up. Oh, that looks really pretty. Hmm. We'll figure. Just one second, Oscar. I'm going to take a look at yours too. Oh, oh, very nice. But you know what? They're just, um, they're beautiful, you guys. They're both beautiful. I love them. These are, they must, you guys must be feeling so pleased. Right. And then, of course, I know we're kind of running out of time. I've got 20 minutes left. Oops. Um, and then, of course, we've got these. I would say green, I'm mixing yellow with my darker green, a touch of white, and then a little bit of red in the mix. So that really what's dominantly coming out is green and kind of a lighter green. Oh yeah, I can see I need even lighter. Right. To kind of start to get, so it's kind of a greeny, yellow red on this top layer. Here we go, like that. No green in here. I'm probably going to want to go fairly dark green. With a bit of red for my background, kind of around these things. I can lay this out a little bit loosely with a big brush, kind of flopping around to create this idea of these. Oops. I can keep also put a totally different color background. I don't, you know, you don't want green. Uh oh, battery saver. Hold on. Get more plug. Right, so I can kind of. I don't like how that looks, but give me a second. Anik did the smart thing and put red there, so she can totally get her greens to pop. Good job. No, Let's see. How do I fix that? The um, pods in the back have a lot of white in them, which is a good thing to actually use because white is kind of flattening and it'll push them back. Got a little too much white here, but um, I'll add it in and then I'll sort of erase some of it, whatever isn't working. You see how these start to come out a little bit as you 
add that white and they also push back a little bit. Now I can add a little bit of green in there. Uh, the other thing I can do is really start to clean up my edges too. So I can take some kind of maybe a touch of white, yellow, and pink to add my highlights in up here. White can sometimes work. It usually helps to tint white. Kind of a, yeah, I don't really like it. I'm going to put yellow on top. I don't like the white. I feel it's too sterile. I'm kind of pinking out everything here with less white. Right, but you can add in these little. Kind of touches with white, not too much. Like right there, there. You'll definitely want kind of a lighter pinker layer on the outside here. That's definitely happening. So you can kind of start to tighten up your um edges of your flower the edges of the flower against the green background are pretty um uh hard unlike these layers here which are kind of softer As you see i'm coming back in and kind of cleaning I'm I'm getting rid of these like little white spots that are kind of left on my canvas. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, that looks it's starting to look nice. I'm looking here, I'm going to kind of add a little bit of pop here, white here. You see how sometimes I'm having to return to areas. To push those values. Yeah, that's nice. I'm assuming everybody's pretty happy with their flower right now. Even if you're not entirely done with it, you're having good things happening. Notice I'm using a lot less water and a lot more just solid paint at this stage. I'm also going to kind of bring in a little bit of paint in there and then go over it with green. So you see how everything we do to kind of push these edges now. Oh, I see the right here. Here I've been kind of working these edges. It hasn't really been working. It's because it's not dark enough around it. So I'm darkening around here. See, so sometimes it's not your the the edge that you're working, but the thing that's next to the edge that's the problem. That's why painting is such a different mindset, right? Because you're always thinking about, it's very strategic. You're always thinking about um, all the pieces. When you're painting a flower, you're not used to thinking about the background, but the background is really key. 
uh, in getting the flower to do what you want it to, you know, in getting the flower to look good. So I'm kind of working the background as well as the foreground. That helps. Yeah, it's starting to look pretty. Once again, I think I can make that work here too. Right? Part of what's happening here is my my little um, closed in whatever you call these, um, you know, buds. Poppy buds aren't showing up because of my background as much as my for as much as the buds themselves. So I'm going back into darker green to really push those out. It's helping. It's kind of amazing how much this is a background problem as opposed to a foreground problem. So I'll take a picture. Yeah. There we are, the wonder of, of the magic of painting. It's less detail than you think it is. It's just strategically placed detail. Oh, wow. <laughs> Very nice, Ross. Very nice. Isn't that beautiful? Yes. <laughs> Aren't you pleased? Much better than last. Yes. Yes. How oh, lovely. Good job. Mia, I loved your eight feet long, <gasps> oh! eight feet long painting. Oh, Thank my God. you. Oh, my God. That was so hard. <laughs> <laughs> so did you like uh, like you know um, uh, climb us like you know a, a ladder short ladder or like I climbed a tall ladder <laughs> I climbed a <laughs> tall ladder and yeah. I couldn't even fit it in my studio so I had to paint it in their <laughs> living room so yeah. it sat there for two months kind of leaning against the wall because that was the only <laughs> place we could fit it and then the people who commissioned it you know would walk back and forth and watch me <laughs> they both worked from home so they were like walking back and forth and they had two cats that were like obsessed with the uh crinkly you know um uh uh sheets that I put out so that we wouldn't get carpet so the cats are always like 
you know, sprinkle, 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 sprinkle like on it. It was hilarious. It was like a, a very slow, unexciting, like um, TV show for them. <laughs> <You know? laughs> sit there uh, and the other thing that's quite funny is uh she said she noticed um that and which i did not know uh i guess because i'm just with myself all the time and not really observing that i talk to myself when i'm painting so and often i'm sort of pumping myself up like oh yeah look at that that looks good <laughs> yeah oh god <laughs> all day long i'm like oh yeah that's like good Oh yeah, good. Nice job. Oh, I got it. Yeah, there you go, Leah. You got it. You guys just said like constantly I was sort of talking myself through the painting. <laughs> I think you need to step yourself up when you used to teach you like that. Yeah. Right? You totally do. It was really funny though. Cause you know, when you're you're by yourself, like I'm by myself most of the time. I probably do that all the time. I just don't know that. I do that. <laughs> Um, yes, yes, thank you. I was really happy with it. It came out, it came out really well. And, uh, but it took a long, about two months off and on, probably 60 hours, I would say. It's more than a week's worth of work, you know, kind of eight, if you're doing a full eight hour day. Um, but it was great. I'd do it again. Anybody else want to send theirs in? I'm sending you my penguins. Let's see the penguins. Penguins. I'm sending in mine. All right. Send them over. Let's see. Oh, <laughs> oh Sandra, they're great. I think <laughs> they're pretty much done. I just put yeah, I they need. are just a couple of strokes for the background, not too much. Oh, and then the cascade. <laughs> oh, you guys, look at these! Aren't they cute? Yeah, but <laughs> fluffy guys, the baby. But you know, I guess they're brown. They're brown and fluffy. They're brown and fluffy. <laughs> oh, oh, awesome! Your beautiful, oh. beautiful work. Stunning. Love it. I'm loving these, you guys. Let's just, uh, I'm going to hang on just a few minutes longer because I want to see where you get with these. No, uh, just, beautiful. yeah, just a, just a heads up that in, for Europe and Mexico, oh, Anik, lovely, lovely, lovely. Yep. Gorgeous. Thank you. I'm Gorgeous. not yet convinced. Yeah, work a little bit of texture into the background. So, oh, oh, Emma, yay. Oh God, you guys, these are so great. Really beautiful. Are you enjoying this? This is very satisfying, isn't it? It's super satisfying. Anika, oh yes, Anika, coming along though. I love it, I love it. I like this little yellow outline. I can see exactly where you're going with it. Careful though, not to overuse the white. Because can you see how flattening that white is? Lighten with yellow rather than white. Because yeah. the white will kind of make it feel not so. White just comes across as very uh, cool and kind of neutral, kind of mm -hmm. muddy. Um, it's funny. Just sort of like you use it, but in little tiny splashes, you know, like salt. Mm -hmm. so my ship is starting, so I'm saying see you tomorrow. All right, madam, we'll see you soon. Thank you very much. So, so Leonard, kind of turn the background into like a plane. How am I, how should I make that look like kind of grass would be? Just, you know, you want to you do, know, like, take a big brush and, do, and, and sort of tap in different values of green, stuff that's lighter, stuff that's darker. Try taking like, you know, tapping in like this. Let's see. Leah, I'll also leave. I um, have to have my dinner. All right, Rashmi. We're moving towards, hey, Rashmi, in two weeks, we'll be moving towards an earlier start for you for the next yes. six months. Yeah. Happy birthday. Okay. All right, sweetie, have, have a great day. Yeah. Yes, Bye. yes. So you see how you can kind of pat in, tap in with a big brush to create that feeling. I'll try that. Anybody still here? 
He's still here. Yeah. All right. Let's spend just a couple more minutes working. All right, how's it going? Oops, is everybody gone? Nope. No, yeah. you're here, I think you're I, here. I think I like my background. I still don't know about my flower. Um, send it over. Yeah, and as always, on, in a picture, it looks better. Right. It's not as <laughs> bad. <laughs> we have to remember that. Let's see. Oh, yeah, yeah. Looks lovely. Um, I think you're in good shape. You may, yeah, uh, this looks a little bit too abrupt here. Mm -hmm. So maybe darken it a little bit. Yeah. You can put this a is tiny un, un, bit of light, right? And it's that white. It just doesn't really work. Yeah, I like it up here better. So um, the one of the things to do might be kind of, um, I did this a little bit. I started working kind of a bright yellow in the background around the areas where I want to show light. 
just a little bit of a, can you see this? So I know you've got that dark background you like, but maybe if you get in a little bit of light, it helps. See how it helps kind of push the bright forward yeah. a little bit. Okay. It's because there's a lot of yellow and the eye goes to um, yellow first in our compositions, right? Or the closest thing that's to it. So if you kind of put yellow around the edges and then blend it out so it's not so obvious, that will help with the glow without having to, it'll help your light areas kind of pop as well. Yeah, I think that's a good. Sometimes you need dark and sometimes you need light. It's funny, right? But if you think about it, it makes sense. If there's light kind of brightening here, it's probably also in the background a little bit. So for the eye, it kind of reads nicely have that Annika, how's yours coming along? Oscar and Emma, how are you guys doing? Let's it's, um it's let's, better now. Okay, so let us I'm gonna remove the spotlight. Let's go ahead and hold, put yourself in gallery view so you can see everybody equally. Let's hold them up, which I think is helpful. I still have too much white, but I'm gonna get Oh yeah, no, yeah, but now it's starting to kind of glow a little bit more, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, guys. Hold them up. Hold them up, Emma. Hold them up, Oscar. Hold them up. Oh, they're beautiful. They're so beautiful. Oh, yeah. When you're done, send me the final. And I'd like to run these across the the, the Instagram thread, if you guys don't mind. These are great paintings. But I'll wait until you're all done. So send okay. me your final when you're ready. Great work, everybody. Hang in there. Pray for Ukraine. Bye. 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 Bye.